Ok, Fra Valentino, the rule. How did it come to you? Or how was the rule of our community initiated? Well, as you know well, right at the beginning of our community, it's not that I was uh, thinking of making a rule or not. Travelling around in different pilgrimages, I saw that St. Francis of Assisi at the beginning didn't want a rule. He thought, my rule is the gospel. And uh, in my littleness, I really didn't uh, think about it. I thought of living as a good Christian, retreated away in the countryside with uh, the contemplative spirit, a little like the Carmelites, and in a strong way, poor like the first Franciscans. But I never thought of nor the habit nor the rule. It was completely out of my thought. The fact is that uh, one day, if you remember, when you came to have your first experience, when in the morning we had sharing and in the little chapel, little, little, in the scout camp, not the stables, when uh, I recounted that dream that I had and uh, I was a little worried because actually it seemed as if the Lord wanted to really say something. And the dream was this, that I recounted, if you remember. Uh, last night I had a dream, wow, it was really quite strong. It was as if I was in a little church where all the pews were facing the back instead of facing the tabernacle where they were all facing towards the exit door. And in particular, I had understood that it was as if it was a big tabernacle, not to say a giant tabernacle. And I was waiting in the end as if someone had to arrive. Uh, and uh, Father Felici and uh, Bishop uh, Malandrino and the superior of the bishop arrived. Therefore, it was the Bishop of Noto at the time, Malandrino, who could symbolize any bishop, and the superior of the bishop. When, in the end, Father Felici entered, immediately the bishop fell to his knees before me, saying, begging, sorry, sorry, forgive me, forgive me. And I said, Your Excellency, but what are you doing? I fell to my knees as well, also embracing him. But what, what are you saying, Your Excellency? What are you saying? Why do I have to forgive you? He rose up and uh, he knelt down together with the superior of the bishop and, uh, and was there together with him. And uh, the priest anyhow told me, brothers, but uh, but uh, do you have a rule? A rule? I answered, truly, uh, we have a, a lifestyle in uh, the way that uh, we live in a certain way, but a rule, I wouldn't know where to begin. And uh, it came to me in the dream, something to tell him, uh, if you want, uh, we can we can write down on paper what we do, uh, but it's not as if we really have a, a, a rule truly finished and ready. This is what the rule is. This is what the rule is. You have to write down on paper what you live. This is the rule. And then I woke up. Ah, he also said in the end, because uh, like so, then I'll give it to the bishop. And it finished there. I woke up and recounted to you all this dream. And if you remember well, there was also that uh, North Italian sister as well as the brother. And that evening we went to Mass at the Annunciata. And in the evening, the sister went to confess. And either before, during or after, I don't know, the sister speaking with a priest, and the priest, knowing nothing about it, told her, but you guys, do you have a rule? And the sister told him, this is in the material reality, yeah. But do you have a rule? And the sister, but father, what rule? But the rule is to write your lifestyle down on paper, black over white. Like so, then you'll give it to me and I'll present it to the bishop. So then when the sister recounted this, let's say that the most surprised was me because I'd seen that scene within me. And therefore I'd understood that the Lord wanted that we put onto paper in a simple way a lifestyle. That we consigned to the priest who in reality asked for it we consigned it on the 31st of January of uh, 1999 uh, or uh, 2000. Uh, sorry, uh, because in uh, 99 on the 14th of April is when I started. Now, uh, presently for us, uh, this rule is called the DNA in the sense that it's the DNA of our community that we've uh, translated into a juridical canonical language according to the models of the Congregation for the Institutes of Consecrated Life in 2002. They are the models that have been prepared for public associations in anticipation of becoming an Institute of Consecrated Life. And therefore the substance is always that of the DNA, but the child that step by step grows, it's always the same one, the identity, the being. The person is always the same, the size changes, the articulation develops. But the substance of the DNA, of our internal ruling, is always the same. So then, in regards to this, 
like so it is written in DNA Vuvu, internal ruling in juridical canonical itinerance. We need to obey to God through obedience to the Catholic Church, guided by St. Peter, figured by the Pope, that is he who from generation to generation has received the apostolic blessing and the keys of the kingdom from St. Peter and therefore from Jesus Christ, that is from God in person. Therefore, in poor words, we can resume all this as such. To obey to the Pope is equivocal to obey to God. This is the will of God. Obey to the Pope.